Hi, I'm Bob. Good to see you in the introductory econometrics course. We will solve the problems for Chapter 17, Limited Dependent Variable Models, and Sample Selection Corrections. In the textbook, Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach, the seventh edition, by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's solve problem 1. In part 1, for a binary response y, let y be the proportion of 1s in the sample. Let q0 hat be the percent correctly predicted for the outcome y equals 0, and let q1 hat be the percent correctly predicted for the outcome y equals 1. If p hat is the overall percent correctly predicted, show that p hat is a weighted average of q0 hat and q1 hat. Suppose there were n observations. n0 observations are for the outcome y equals 0, and n1 observations are for the outcome y equals 1. The sum of n0 and n1 is the total observations n. If q0 hat is the percent correctly predicted for y equals 0, then the number of correct predictions for y equals 0 is q0 hat times n0. Similarly, the number of correct predictions for y equals 1 is q1 hat times n1. The total number of correct predictions is q0 hat times n0 plus q1 hat times n1. There were n0 plus n1 observations in the sample. So the overall percent correctly predicted is the total number of correct predictions divided by the total number of observations. Rearranging the expression, we obtain the answer. The overall percent correctly predicted is a weighted average of q0 hat and q1 hat, where the weights are the fractions of zeros and ones in the sample. In part 2, we plug in the values. The overall percent correctly predicted is 52%. Let's do problem 2. Let grad be a dummy variable for whether a student athlete at a large university graduates in 5 years. Let HS GPA and SAT be high school grade point average and SAT score, respectively. Let study be the number of hours spent per week in an organized study hall. Suppose that Using data on 420 student athletes, the following logic model is obtained. Holding high school GPA fixed at 3.0 and SAT fixed at 1,200, compute the estimated difference in the graduation probability for someone who spent 10 hours per week in study hall and someone who spent 5 hours per week. First, we can calculate the latent variable z in each situation. Then using the logistic function, we can compute the probabilities of graduation for the two different groups of student athletes. The difference between them is 0 0.078. The student athletes who spend 10 hours per week in study hall are 7.8 percentage points more likely to graduate in 5 years than the student athletes who spend 5 hours per week holding 
high school GPA fixed at 3.0 and SAT fixed at 1,200. Let's find answers to problem 3. In part 1, suppose that in the 2-bit model that x1 equals log z1, and this is the only place z1 appears in x. Show the following equation. From equation 17.26 in the textbook, we have the expression for the partial effect of x1. Using the chain rule, we can reach the answer. For part 2, we still use the chain rule. Now z1 is in x1 and x2. So we write the first derivative into two parts. Using the equation 17.26 in the textbook again, we can obtain the answer. Let's solve problem 4. Let MVP i be the marginal value product for Booker i, which is the price of a firm's good multiplied by the marginal product of the worker. Assume that the log of marginal value product is a function of education, experience, and so on. The wage for worker i equals her marginal value product when the marginal value product is greater than the relevant minimum wage. Her wage is the minimum wage if the marginal value product is lower than the minimum wage. The question asks us to write the log of wage in terms of log of MVP and log of minimum wage. We can write the log of wage for worker I as follows. The reason is that the log function is an increasing function. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me today. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.